What's going on, everyone? Lauren Sister here with ESPN, hanging out with Cole Kublik, also on the SEC Network. He hangs out with Greg McElroy in the morning on WJOX from 7 to 10. Check them out. Always some good stuff there. Lots of great uh, information, intel as we head into week nine of the college football season. Holy moly. Don't say that. It's depressing to hear. Week nine, y'all. We're almost in the double dig, and that's crazy. All right, so we're going to break this thing down. Auburn coming off a bye week, going up against Arkansas at home in Jordan-Harris Stadium for another episode of Head to Head. All right, first and foremost, shout out to our sponsors, Alabama Cattlemen's Association. We appreciate you hanging with us all season long. All right, uh, we got Auburn, Arkansas. Arkansas, the three and a half point favorite in this one. We'll get into the matchup, but with Auburn three and four on the season, looking at the rest of the schedule, home versus Arkansas, at Mississippi State, back home for Texas A&M and Western Kentucky, and then they close out the season on the road against Alabama. Cole, just kind of give us an overview sort of if you're a player you're in this sort of position right now you're three and four you kind of got to give it all you got if you want to become bowl eligible how do you kind of keep that mojo going coach harson said you know overall things are positive they've gone to work the effort has absolutely been there in practice and in preparation but what are your overall thoughts at how auburn keeps this thing going in a positive direction i think you utilize that bye week first and foremost so you get some guys healthy maybe closer to 100 percent get more guys available and you get a little bit of rest. You get away from it. You get to sort of mentally reset. And that's valuable for a team that has not lived up to expectations or maybe been struggling a little bit. So you could also add some things. I mean, there are certain guys that need more development. The offensive line obviously needs development. Quarterback needs development. They get more reps. And then you kind of go back to the drawing board, self-scout. Okay, what can we add to help make certain players more successful? And I think you'll see some of that coming out of the bye week. And I think looking at the overall, you talk about the quarterback situation, the development. Coach Harson talks about the development of the quarterbacks. He's seeing growth and improvement. And I think this is going to be a big week against this Arkansas team where Robbie Ashford can really start to maybe flash a little bit, show what he's capable of, obviously, through the air on the ground. Because let's be real, Arkansas, there are some gaps in their pass defense. And I think this could be an opportunity for him to really come out show that he can be the quarterback of this football team and kind of carry this team. I hope the bye week obviously certainly helps them with that development. And, um, you know, I think this would be a good opportunity for him to really show that. I don't think there's any doubt that this is a defense that the third level has struggled the majority of this season. It's kind of a, it's really an odd sort of back and forth with the Arkansas defense, one that can get to the quarterback, but does not really seem to be able to stop the pass. And it started early against Cincinnati. There were multiple throws down the field that were missed. Yards that were left on the field in that game. And then Jalen Catalan goes out. Then you lose a couple more guys on that back end. So if Auburn can handle things up front, that's the more difficult task. Then maybe Robbie Ashford can find some things down the field. Maybe the coaching staff puts a few things together to help him be more successful with his legs. I just love the way he battled back against Ole Miss. You get yeah. benched. And then mentally, you come back and still put together some positive plays. I like the fact that Robbie Ashford showed. Yeah, we saw it. he was emotional on the sideline. You lose your job right then and there. It's not easy. It's difficult, but he got it together enough to come back in and help Auburn be in that game late. I was impressed with what he did. Anxious to see what else he can do against an Arkansas defense. Stout up front, but gives up a lot of yards on the back end. And that goes back to what we've talked about throughout the season from kind of jump. At Robbie Ashford being the younger guy, having to keep his emotions in check, has really struggled with that. The coaching staff has had to kind of coddle him a little bit more, try to get him sort of, you know, wrap his mind around the mistakes, compartmentalize. And to be able to do that, I think you make a great point. So it shows maturity. It shows growth from the young quarterback. Okay, you go to the defensive side of the football. Obviously, you got K.J. Jefferson a guy that can get you on his feet. He's uh, one of the more dynamic rushers, obviously, you know, for this Arkansas team. You also got to worry about Raheem Sanders, one of the best rushers in, in the country right now, ranks eighth amongst all the FBS rushers, um, averaging almost 125 yards a game. Uh, so he's somebody you got to look out for. And let's be real, Auburn's uh, run defense has not been great this season. No, and the location of the football has been problematic. We talked about split zone where you block zone one way, the tight end comes across the other side. Visually, that's really hurt this Auburn defense. Also counter play. So it looks as though you're going to run one way and it comes back the other way. That has been a bit of an issue. And we saw Ole Miss does it better than anybody, and they had success with it. Well, Lane has taken a lot of the Browse tree into his offense now that he runs and Kendall Bryles is running this Arkansas offense. 
They've got weapons on the perimeter, weapons in the backfield, and a dual threat quarterback, and an offensive line is playing really good football this year. So work's cut out for the Auburn defense. The key for the game is locating the football, not being out of position, not allowing a motion or the quarterback, maybe a fake or a read or RPO to get you out of your spot as far as where you need to be to potentially make a play because that's been happening often with this Auburn defense the last couple of weeks. All right, if we dive into the predictions, I think this is an interesting matchup with these two teams. I think Arkansas, the expectations coming into the season, they kind of came out swinging. Things have kind of leveled off for them. They really kind of match up sort of bottom of the SEC West right now. So I do think this is a great opportunity for this Auburn team to kind of get things back on track, see where they are health-wise. I know Arkansas has been banged up. They're also coming off a bye week. You think Auburn has a chance to win this one. What's your prediction? They do have a chance, and, and I think obviously it can be competitive, will be competitive. First off, two teams coming off a bye, there are going to be a lot of things that coaches are just waiting to see. Yep. Are there new fronts? Are there new players? Is the personnel grouping the same as it was prior to that? So I think it'll be a bit of a slow start for both. I just don't know if Auburn has the weapons on the perimeter to take advantage of a secondary that's been struggling. And look what Ole Miss just did on the ground. I don't think that that just goes away. I don't think you just clean that up. I think visually where Auburn has struggled defensively, it'll be just as much of a difficult task against Arkansas. They have success on the ground. I don't think it's a crazy game as far as the scoreboard. I think 21-10, Arkansas gets the win. All right, I got a little bit of a higher scoring game. You know oh. you might make fun of your I'm going to pick Auburn in this one. Four-point game, 28-24. I know Jordan-Hare Stadium. Let's hope we see some development from these guys. Maybe get the ball running for Tank Bigsby. Take some of that pressure off of Robbie Ashford. 28-24. I don't know. We'll see. Brought to you by Alabama Beef Farmers and Ranchers.